Hello everybody and welcome back to The One Channel. My name is Jack Mather and today I'm going to be telling you a very important story uh, about the Romanov family and their fate. Um, before I get to that, there is something else quite important that I want to tell you and that is sort of what's going on with the channel because yesterday, 23rd of January, was the anniversary of my first video that I ever uploaded to YouTube. And um, my plan, noises, my plan was to make a you know, special about that and to watch a bunch of my old videos and react to them and sort of be like, oh, that's shit, that's all cringeworthy. And um, that's really weird, ah, you know, my voice or whatever. And uh, <laughs> I started doing that. And I never finished it. I just went, I, I don't want to do it. And then 23rd came and went. And I just went, ah, I'm too lazy to do this. I'll do the Romanov video. Which was recommended to me by somebody. A viewer named Rauman Khan. Rauman? Rauman. Rauman Khan. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I'm doing this now. I'm going to read... This video, I need to tell you something about that, but quickly I want to explain what this year is going to mean for the channel. Um, and I want to make better quality stuff, more in the wild wilderness sort of stuff, some more stuff about bone clones. I need to, I'm trying to make an order for bone clones right now, but they're so expensive. And, you know, I'm 19 now, and so. I'm working for my money and that's, you know, I'm funding myself and it's, it's difficult to just go around buying that sort of thing, um, on a whim. So yeah, I, I will get something from Bone Clone soon, probably a North American Lion Skull. Um, that's something I've been eyeing off for a while and I, I haven't got around to it for about a year and a half and that may be even two years and uh, I want to get that. So I'll probably end up getting that. but. Yeah, we're, uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Romanov family, and um, I should explain to you, and I know everyone's skipping past this part, and I get that, but this is important. Um, this video is not a documentary. People didn't seem to understand that when I made the videos about the Manson family, which uh, some of my most viewed videos. If not, I think I think the Tate murders is my most viewed video. Sorry, my camera cut out there. I don't know what that was. Um, and I think the Tate videos is my is my most viewed video. So this is important to understand. This is not a documentary. I'm not trying to come in from some like non-biased, super scientific point of view, which is odd because I am a scientist. But I'm trying to get the story across and just teach people about this. Show them what happened. The consensus of what happened. And what I believe happened. Um, so, you know, you'll notice if you're an expert in this sort of field, especially in the murders uh, of the Romanovs, you'll notice towards the end that there's stuff that I skipped over. And that's mostly because it's for time. I'm not trying to make an hour long documentary talking about this. I need it to be relatively short. And also because it doesn't really contribute that much to the message of what I'm trying to tell you, okay? I'm not worried about the who, which checker members were the ones that committed the crime, okay? I, I just want to talk about the Romanovs. Um, and so anyway, with all that aside, I know people are going to yell at me in the comments again. People yelled, it was funny that people had a go at me in the comments for the Tate and Lobbyanka murders. And, you know, people that I guess were supporters of Manson, or at least were supporters of him being innocent or something, which is ridiculous. I, fuck, I just don't understand how you can even be from that perspective. So it's going to be interesting to see what people say about this. So um, without further ado, let's get into the video. Cheers. Some time ago, I made a two-part video documentary on the infamous Tate Lobianca murders of the 1960s, and those videos garnered significant success. After a recommendation from a viewer named Rauman Khan, I've decided to make my next one about the horrific and brutal execution of the Romanov family. 
which occurred on the 17th of July 1918 in Yekaterinburg, Russia. In order to explain precisely what happened to the Romanovs, I must first provide you with some history. On the 1st of November 1894, Nikolai Alexandrovich Romanov became the ruling Tsar of the Russian Empire, having inherited the throne from his father, Alexander II. Despite his incredible stature as the monarch of the Russian Empire, one of the most powerful empires in history, Nikolai did not believe himself fit to lead, and unfortunately, neither did the working class. Pressure had been building within the rapidly failing economic system of the Russian Empire for quite some time, and the new Tsar, considered by many to be a poor leader, was now placed in the difficult position of trying to fix the worsening issues with Russia's entire socio-political system. After a catastrophic defeat during the Russo-Japanese War, and presently suffering enormous losses in the First World War, the Russian people were at breaking point. Under the rule of the Tsar, they were starving, financially and physically exhausted. After a failed revolution in 1905, the Russian people had already proven that they were capable of staging a major revolt against the Tsar and the imperial government. As a result of this, the Tsar abdicated, and a new form of government took hold immediately afterwards, called provisional government. However, things in Russia were only worsening, and if they didn't change soon, the entire government could easily collapse entirely. And then it did. The revolution of 1917 was sudden and horrendously violent. The rebelling Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, began a civil war with the ruling class, with the Russian army exhausted and under-equipped from fighting on the front lines of the Great War, and with many soldiers and officers defecting and joining the Bolsheviks, the revolution was not looking good for the provisional government. On the 22nd of March 1917, the former Tsar, now simply known as Nikolai Romanov, was sent into exile by the government in an effort to keep him and his family safe. Nikolai secretly lived in Siberia with his family and were constantly surrounded by guards and were not allowed to leave the property. As the revolution continued and the provisional government struggled to fend off the growing Bolshevik forces, the Romanov family's condition gradually worsened, and within a year they were placed on soldiers' rations. In April of 1918, the government moved Nikolai and some members of his family, including his wife Alexandra and their daughter Maria, to Yekaterinburg. Their four other children, Anastasia, Olga, Tatiana and Alexei, who suffered from severe haemophilia, remained in Tobolsk until May when they were finally reunited after the Bolsheviks successfully overthrew the provisional government and were now living in the Apatiev house. The conditions of the Apatiev house were nothing short of terrible. The Romanovs were placed in total isolation and were forbidden from speaking any other language besides Russian. The family was imprisoned in cold rooms that had been modified to limit sunlight and air ventilation. They had limited access to water and food, being forced to eat black bread and soup, the Bolsheviks killed some of the Romanov servants, and as the months drew on, even the Romanovs themselves understood that their situation was dire. On the 29th of June, the Ural Regional Soviet decided that the Romanov family should be exterminated. They planned to drive a large truck to the basement of the Apatiev house for transportation of the bodies. The truck was to have its engine running while the execution took place in order to mask the gunfire. With the secret objective of destroying the entire Romanov family, the Cheka, a group of Soviet secret police, prepared to perform the act. July 16th, 1918. While eating dinner, the Romanovs are informed that their kitchen boy, Leonid Sedny, would be leaving the house to visit his uncle Ivan. Little did they know, this was a lie, as Ivan had already been killed. Leonid was a playmate for Alexei, and the family was surprised by the news of his leaving. He was the fifth member of the Apatiev staff to leave in the recent days, which garnered suspicion among the Romanovs. Alexandra did not trust the information and made an entry in her diary, writing, Whether it is true, and we shall see the boy back again. The journal entry would be her last, written only hours before her death. Around midnight on the 17th of July, the Romanovs were awoken by their physician, Eugene Botkin. They were told to put their clothes on, as they were being moved to a safer location. They were then forced into a small basement, and Nikolai asked if the guards could bring two chairs for Alexandra and Alexei. The Romanovs were told to wait patiently while the truck to deliver them to their new location arrived. After some time, the checker entered the basement and read an order to Nikolai, saying, 
Nikolai Alexandrovich. In view of the fact that your relatives are continuing their attack on Soviet Russia, the Ural Executive Committee has decided to execute you. Nikolai turned to his family in shock and shouted, What? several times, and the order was repeated, as the Cheka raised their firearms. The following shooting was horrific, to say the least. Alexandra and Olga tried to bless themselves and made several desperate pleas for their lives, but they were cut short when the shooting started. Nikolai was shot at least three times in the chest at point-blank range and collapsed to the floor, where he died. Alexandra was shot in the head, killing her instantly. Maria made a run for the doors but was shot in the thigh, hindering her escape. As the room filled with smoke from the gunfire, the executioners became frantic and fired chaotically in all directions around the room until no one could see anything at all. The checker were then told to stop firing, as the gunshots were much louder than anticipated. They were instead ordered to execute the surviving family members with their bayonets. While waiting for the smoke to clear, the killers could hear whimpering and crying from inside the room. Once it was clear enough to see, the checker were surprised to find that all of the Romanov children had survived, although Maria was severely wounded. In a horrendous act of violence, the young Alexei was shot with an entire rifle magazine, stabbed with bayonets and then shot twice in the back of the head. The boy had survived the initial onslaught due to his clothing being embedded with jewellery, which had astonishingly protected his body from the bullets and blades. The last to die were Tatiana, Anastasia and Maria, who also had jewellery such as diamonds sewn into their clothes, which again protected them from much of the gunfire, but only made their deaths even more prolonged. Olga had been killed by a gunshot wound to the head, and Maria and Anastasia crouched by a wall and covered their heads in terror until they too were shot and killed. Tatiana was killed by a single gunshot to the back of the head, similar to Alexei. After several of the Romanov's maidens and aides had also been brutally murdered, the Cheka proceeded to stab the bodies of their victims to ensure they were dead before the bodies were loaded onto the truck and transported to a mine shaft. On the way, they were undressed completely and their clothing was searched for jewels, which several workers who had been hired to bury the family took for themselves. Alexandra's corpse was sexually defiled, and the workers who committed this act were immediately dismissed. The bodies were then dumped into a mine shaft and doused in sulfuric acid to leave them unrecognizable, before being hastily buried. However, the checker believed the mine wasn't deep enough, and so the mangled bodies were removed and taken to a deeper one. On the way, the transport vehicle became bogged down in mud, and the exhausted workmen decided to simply bury the bodies beneath the road instead. They assaulted the corpses with their tools and rifle butts, smashing their faces and again dousing them in acid. They then buried the bodies with mud, debris, and beneath railway ties. Over the decades following the horrific murders of the Romanov family, the Soviets maintained the utmost secrecy regarding the location of the burial site and even the killings themselves, mostly assuring the Russian populace that only Nikolai had been executed and that Anastasia and their children survived in a safe, remote place. Despite this, by the late 1970s the burial site had been discovered by amateur enthusiasts who kept their discovery a secret until the Soviet Union finally collapsed in 1991 and the restrictions on searching for the burial site were essentially lifted. In 2007, Alexei and Maria's bodies became the final corpses discovered. No matter the debate about Tsar Nikolai II's effectiveness as a ruler, it goes without saying that the gruesome and violent end to his family was unequivocally and unnecessarily brutal. The deaths of the Romanovs and the the deaths of the Romanovs in the aftermath of lies and cover-ups that followed serves as a reminder of history's horrific nature, and let's just hope this part of history never repeats itself. I'm not quite sure if I want to steer this channel too far into the historical side of things, as I have already covered the tate Labianka murders and now the Romanov murders too. I am fascinated by history, especially the 20th century, but I think I'll try to keep my content on the scientific side of things as I'm currently studying biological sciences at university. Well, in any case, I thank you all for watching this video, and I hope you learned something from it. 
I tried to make this video seem more like a narrative than a documentary, which is why I omitted several statistics, facts, and individual names, including the names of the specific Cheka executioners. I am much less of an expert on this incident than I am on the Manson murders, so I am almost certain that I have probably made several errors here. If so, please point them out to me in the comments section, uh, ideally in a respectful manner, uh, and head to the description to join my Discord server. Subscribe below by giving the subscribe button a nice smack, and I will see you all in a few days for a camping video uh, with some of my mates. So, yeah, cheers.